Greetings, and this is another video of the series regarding pressure vessels. In a strength of materials course, if we look at a cylinder, I'm just going to draw half the cylinder here. Comes back like that. We have in here a certain outer diameter here we've got a inner diameter and a wall thickness T inside we have a pressure P now we derived a couple of equations the stress that is on this surface here is the longitudinal stress. It's trying to separate the pressure vessel along the axial line. So that's why they call it the longitudinal stress. And we're going to consider this stress in the x direction and then there's the hoop stress and that's on this direction stress in the y and it's simplified because uh, it's a relatively thin section and that means that the wall thickness has got to be less than the inner diameter divided by 20. So let's do a problem based on that. Our formulas that we derived were that the stress in the x direction, known as the longitudinal stress, or if it's a sphere, it would be the spherical stress, is equal to the pressure times the inner diameter all over 4 times the wall thickness. Now this value inner diameter, sometimes others use uh, the mean diameter, which is the average between the inner diameter and the outer diameter, but if we're talking about thin pressure vessels it won't make that much of a difference and I'll show that to you uh, later in the example. the stress in the y direction or the hoop stress is twice that of the x so it's p times di over 2t okay on to our example our example is an acetylene tank okay Obviously, you need to ha keep that safe. And the outer diameter is 300 millimeters. Now, the actual problem says the diameter. I'm going to assume that's, that's the outer diameter. Uh, it's the more common one used. It's what you can measure on a uh, regular basis. So we'll just assume that it's the outer diameter. And we need to keep it at a pressure of 1.7 megapascals and we want a design factor of 4 based on yield strength and we are making it out of 1040 cold drawn steel. So uh, we are asked to find an appropriate thickness for the wall. Okay, so we have to recognize that one of these or both of these equations could be put to use, but I'm only going to worry about uh, this stress here 
because it's always going to be twice what this stress is. So I'm going to ignore the longitudinal stresses uh, for this problem because I know they're going to be uh, half of the hoop stress. So I'm going to use this one here. Sigma y equals pressure times di over 2t. Now it should be uh, painfully obvious at this point that we don't actually know di. We've got p, we're trying to find t. We can find this pretty easily, but we don't know di because di is dependent on the outer diameter and the thickness. So it just complicates the math a little bit. So let's uh, work with our stress here that we need to deal with. And we're going to look up the yield strength of 1040. And if we go to our textbook here, they gave our uh, references online, which is nice. We go to 1040 cold drawn right here and following back over to this location we've got yield strength in the metric units of 565 megapascals so 565 make sure you keep those units straight and so we want to make sure that this design here doesn't give any more than a quarter of this. So we will change this to yield strength over 4 equals pressure times di. Now di is the outer diameter minus 2 times the thickness. Remember, it's twice the thickness that we have to subtract, and that's all over two times the thickness. Well, I'm going to uh, separate these out and do some algebra here. So I'm going to get rid of some t's here. So 2t over 2t becomes 1. So y over 4 equals pressure times this over 2t minus 1. So I've got P outside diameter over 2T minus P. Put P on the other side. Okay, now I just need to solve for T. I'm going to multiply both sides by T. and divide both sides by SY over 4 plus P, so I get rid of this. And I get T equals P D over two all over S Y over four plus P and now I can plug things in. So my pressure is one point seven 
megapascals. My outer diameter is 300 millimeters all over two. I take that, divide that by 565 megapascals all over four plus 1.7 megapascals. So when all that's calculated out, notice how the units work out quite nicely. I've got megapascals here, megapascals here. So everything on the bottom is megapascals. I've got megapascals here on the top. So I can cross out all those megapascals. And all I'm left with are millimeters. Put that into my handy dandy calculator. And I end up with one 1.78 millimeters. So that is our answer, 1.78 millimeters. Now, we had to go through some of this extra stuff because we didn't know the inside diameter. Instead, we knew the outside and we had to uh, consider the minus 2t. If we'd used that mean diameter, um, it would have been uh, equally difficult, if not maybe more so. But uh, I'm just going to throw this out at you and say, what happens if we use, instead of the outside diameter, what if we use the inside diameter? Well, for one thing, the math would be a lot easier. So I'm going to take this equation here and bring it right there. And I'm going to rearrange it. I'm going to solve for t pretty easily. I'm going to multiply both sides by t, divide them by the yield strength. t equals p times the inside diameter all over 2 times yield strength over 4. And that gives us 1.7 megapascals times 300 millimeters all over, okay, 2 divided by 4 is, of course, 2. So we get 565 megapascals over 2, and that gives us 1.81 millimeters. Okay, so that's if we had assumed that this 300 millimeter diameter that was given was actually the inner diameter. Well, the upshot is that we would have actually ended up with a more conservative value. Not much, only by a very small percentage. And when it comes down to it, if we specified a specific thickness of material, we probably would have specified two millimeters. So the thickness of 1.8 for a, this particular vendor, uh, they don't carry 1.8 uh, millimeter thick materials. Uh, but uh, And I didn't find any that did. But they do carry two millimeter thick materials. Now I found another one that ca carried 14 gauge uh, material which is about 1.9 uh, millimeters thick. Uh, the next thing we need to do is make sure that our assumption that it's thin is correct. So we compare the 1.8 millimeters and see if it is less than the inner diameter over 20. So the inner diameter in the first case is going to be 2t, which is 300 millimeters minus 2 times 1.8 millimeters. And so that makes the inner diameter equal to 
four millimeters. If you take that, divide by 20, you end up with 14.8 millimeters. And it is fairly obvious that the 1.8 millimeters is definitely much less than the 14.8 millimeters. So we have a check that is definitely thin. So to recap, we started off on a quick review of what a thin pressure vessel is and how the wall stresses are analyzed. Then we started off on a problem where we had a variety of givens, including the, we assumed it was the outer diameter, the material, the design factor, the pressure, and so on. And we were challenged to find an appropriate thickness using only the hoop stress because it's always going to be larger than the longitudinal stress. We used our outer diameter minus 2t for the inner diameter, solved for the thickness of 1.78 millimeters. We also looked at it as if it were a little bit easier and it was the inner diameter that was specified at 300 millimeters and we found a fairly similar and even more conservative result. So if we just use the 1.8 millimeters, we check that to make sure that it was less than 1 20th of the inner diameter and it certainly was and so we can check that it's thin. Whether it was the um, this one up here, which got us 1.78 millimeters, or this one here, which is 1.81 millimeters. Uh, they were still both thin, and uh, we probably would have ended up specifying a 2 millimeter thick sheet. This would only have made a difference if we uh, had 1.8 millimeter sheet available to us, and uh, we wanted to uh, be on the less conservative side. So uh, I hope uh, that this video helped and there will be more on thick pressure vessels coming up.